analyzing how forces affect the levers inside the human body, or biomechanics, as well as following and observing certain intensity and time under tension principles, meaning basically maximizing your muscle growth and recovery while maintaining and minimizing damage and time spent in the gym. Now, these principles of physics combined with some basic concepts regarding the human musculature skeletal system and muscle physiology allows us to determine which exercises are best for each muscle group and how much intensity is required to grow new tissue, basically, and to recover optimally. Hello and welcome. I am Coach Castle, a certified biomechanics expert, nutritionalist, and efficiency coach. Subscribe to this channel to learn the most efficient ways to maximize your muscle growth and recovery, enhance your body, and advance your mind, all using the latest science. Welcome to Castle's Corner. Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I am Coach Castle, and today I will be going over how to select your exercises, why it is so important that you select the most efficient exercises, how to do so, how to know how much you're supposed to be training, how many sets, how many reps, how much intensity, how many days a week, what kind of a split you should do, as well as the perfect workout schedule. That's what I'll be covering. This will be the 12 rules of intelligent bodybuilding broken down and summarized scientifically for you. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. So the 12 rules of intelligent bodybuilding by me. Now to understand the science of bodybuilding, some basic things need to be addressed. First, for starters, while it is true that as humans we differ in a large spectrum of personalities, outer appearance, and genetics, our human anatomy and physiology are essentially the same. Now the theory of evolution is how humanity has achieved its current biology and structure. Due to the process of evolution, our bodies have slowly adapted over time to better suit their environmental needs. And the forces of physics have also played a significant role in determining the shape of our bodies, as well as how they function, included, but not limited to, the theory of gravity. Now, gravity is also environmental and has affected everything in our world. Everything from the way that we build our homes, buildings, monuments, how we walk or drive on wheels. These forces are at play around us all the time, although invisible to the human eye. <clears throat> Paleoanthropology Paleoanthropology is the study of fossils, their bones, joints, and how they evolved over the millennia. By looking at these bones of our ancestors, we can see what bones and joints have been designed to do or have not been designed to do evolutionarily. Not in our entire human evolutionary history has it been necessary for us to overpress anything. Now this is since we have evolved slowly from four-legged creatures into upright walking two-legged creatures. Now, an example of this that I use commonly is the incline bench press or the overhead press. Now, performing any incline bench movement or overhead sh shoulder pressing movement will do significant damage to your shoulder joint over time. Now, this is because those muscles which operate those bones already have a natural resistance curve and range of motion. Overhead pressing movements are not a natural movement, therefore your joints and cartilage will be damaged. Now, the primary reason for any fitness enthusiast to complain of shoulder pain, lower back discomfort, any form of joint pain, prolonged soreness, it all stems from inefficient exercise selection, as well as improperly performing exercises. Understand that bodybuilding is a science, contrary to what the many ignorant masses who would tell you that all individuals must be trained differently due to their unique bodies. Tall or short, fat or thin, black or white, human anatomy is human anatomy, and physics is physics. Your muscles only have one perfect movement, as well as one perfect intensity for muscle growth. Now, as you can clearly see, what has been missing from the mainstream fitness instruction is a standardized set of rules or criteria by which all exercises can be evaluated. 
There needs to be a checklist of mechanical factors that can be applied across the board to all resistance exercises, which allows people to determine whether an exercise is optimally productive or highly efficient and safe or high risk with little payoff. The fitness industry has failed to acknowledge that there are biomechanical factors that determine how efficient an exercise is, as well as how bad it is, whether there is sufficient stimulus for muscle growth, or there little no intensity, meaning little to no growth. Now this absence of a scientifically principled approach has resulted in bad exercises, or high risk little reward exercises, being unjustly glorified, due to their ability to be commercialized, as well as the egocentric nature of human beings ex exploited. As a consequence of this, at the same time, highly efficient exercises, or really good exercises, have been overlooked, as well as simple basic intensity principles swept underneath the rug in favor of more commercially viable ones. Now, to define a bad exercise is a movement that unnecessarily loads and or strains non-target muscles more than they load the targeted muscle. They have minimum efficiency with loading the targeted muscle, and they are the ones that waste time and energy because they either fail to deliver the target muscle's operating lever or limb into the ideal direction, or they use the direction of resistance that fails to provide correct alignment with the targeted muscle's ideal resistance curve, meaning a loss of efficiency. Now, if you have spent any time in the gym performing conventional weight training exercises like... Uh, Barbell squats, leg presses, overhead presses, incline bench presses, upright rows, deadlifts, T-bar rows, hanging leg raises, kettlebell swings, you name it, etc. Then I can say with 100% certainty that you have not been exercising efficiently, you have certainly damaged your body, you have spent way more time and energy than is necessary in the gym, you have not stimulated your target muscles as efficiently as you could have, and you have exposed your joints and spine to a significant and unnecessary risk of being injured. So, taking a principled approach to training, or taking a scientific approach, which by the way, you use science in your life for absolutely everything. Why wouldn't you use it for exercise? But, sorry, taking a scientific approach would mean simply analyzing how forces affect the levers inside the human body, or biomechanics, as well as following and observing certain intensity and time under tension principles, meaning basically maximizing your muscle growth and recovery while maintaining and minimizing damage and time spent in the gym. Now, these principles of physics combined with some basic concepts regarding the human musculature skeletal system and muscle physiology allows us to determine which exercises are best for each muscle group and how much intensity is required to grow new tissue, basically, and to recover optimally. Now, I'm sure of you have probably all now gathered by this point, if you're still with me, exercise selection is not a random phenomenon. It's not a mystery. It is a well-understood and well-documented science, which is what I'll be getting into now. Which is the checklist for optimum exercise selection. Okay, these are the 12 rules, if you will. So, 